In this short tutorial series, I will show you how easy it is to create a 3D model like this with your smartphone using Polycam. I will give you a brief introduction on how to work with the functionalities Polycam gives us and show you how I would approach a 3D scan with my smartphone. First of all, we should start by choosing the right object. Since we're taking photographs, the 3D object is determined by what we can see in the picture. Therefore, transparent objects, very smooth surfaces or reflections make it hard for the app to determine a good structure and make the texture very noisy or even leave holes in the mesh. Let's check out this little guy over here. It has a lot of structure in the beard, some folds in the head and its overall material is very soft so it won't cast uh, much shadows. In terms of lighting we should choose a bright but soft light, uh, especially when you're outside. You should look for a cloudy day, therefore the shadows are being less visible and are more evenly distributed around the object. So let's start by opening the Polycam app. In here at the bottom you have two options, the LiDAR mode and the photo mode. The advantages and disadvantages of LiDAR compared to photogrammetry will have another tutorial. Right now we're focusing on the photogrammetry aspect, so we stay at photo. At the left we have two options, auto mode and manual mode. With auto mode you let Polycam completely decide when to take a picture and when not. So if you're going too fast or if you uh, have too much similarity between two images it doesn't take a photo. But if the image is a bit too blurry it still takes pictures. That's a big disadvantage of this mode. Uh, manual mode lets you completely decide uh, when to take a picture. So you can avoid by yourself um, blurry images, but it takes a lot longer. So in this case we stay at auto mode and let Polycam do its thing. So we make sure we have a good distance. We start and hit record. Personally, I start with one full orbit around the object and continue with orbiting around. I make sure that the object fills the entire screen. In the next round, I change the camera angle. Scanning from above or from the bottom creates enough overlap to connect the current image with the images from the first orbit. If you have around 100 images left, I would start capturing the details in close-up. It's perfectly fine if the object is not completely in frame. Just make sure to get enough overlap while transitioning to close-up shots, so Polycam can connect them with the full orbit shots. Alright, we have 252 images. We click on done and data is saving. The next screen shows us all of the images we have taken. If we enter one of the images, it shows a preview. Um, you can scroll through that and make sure that we don't have any blurry images. Also, we have the option to choose a detail. We can choose between optimized, medium and full. I would always choose full mode, since we are cleaning the data up afterwards in Blender. Um, the more polys, the better. I would only choose Optimize if you would like, without any cleanup, just go straight for augmented reality or using um, this object in web. Another thing what we get here is um, to use object masking. So Polycam states that it's uh, very helpful for press processing the data, especially for small objects like this one. So we uh, tick that one, hit upload and process and have to wait for a bit. So upload is done, depending on your internet connection it takes up to several minutes for uploading and right now it's processing, it takes another few minutes. The object has been processed and we can already see it needs a lot of cleanup. Uh, some things we can do within the app, so um, at the bottom we can see the crop tool, it gives us some settings for cropping out the base plate. So let's be a bit generous and crop this one out. So that's 
OK right here. We can also rotate um, the object a bit so that we get everything from the base plate. And let's crop again just slightly over here and hit apply. Okay. Base plate is gone. Another setting is um, if you are if you aren't sure how tall your object is, you can hit the ruler and click on two ends, and it says about one meter. That's obviously not not correct, but we can um, fix that in Blender afterwards. Uh, the video tool is quite cool for sharing uh, this as a video on on social media, for example. And we can also um, reprocess uh, the object, for example, if you would like to uh, deactivate object masking and give that another try. On the top right corner, we have the option to download uh, the object. So if you are using the free version, you only get to choose the GLTF option and also uh, the video option, but that's not necessary for us. Um, the GLTF version is perfectly fine for Blender. In Blender we can convert it afterwards in every other format that we would like to. So there you have it. We scanned an object using Polycam, exported it in GLTF, and the next step would be to clean it up in Blender. We we'll see us in the next video.